Well, I mean, if you look at what's going on down in Miami with this whole spring break thing, at Payne Capital Management, we're calling this the spring break indicator. And it's just evidence that everybody just wants to get out. They're ready for this thing to be over. Um, you know, they want to resume a normal life. And I'm looking at right now, there's $2 trillion of cash sitting on the sidelines and people are ready to cut loose. And you never want to underestimate us as Americans, our ability to spend. And when things really start to open up, I think, you know, we're really going to see a big bump in our economy. The other thing is, is that right now, economists are actually calling for a 6.5% GDP growth by the end of the year. It's already up 4.3%, which is up from 4.1% from the last reporting. And then you've also got unemployment numbers are continuing to improve. And actually, I, I believe today they just announced that we're now at pre-pandemic levels on unemployment. Yeah, and so uh, at least in, in part, right, when we look at some of the employment numbers, um, I think your Miami spring break indicator is exciting because there isn't a person who hasn't seen the pictures of everybody running to Miami and the curfews they're trying to put into place. And it's absolutely wild. And I think it comes from this pent up demand of people being locked in their homes for a year and they want to do something. And it shows that they are ready to spend, I guess, when the time comes. Tell me about some of the risks. Well, I think some of the biggest risks right now, you know, we're hearing a lot about um, potential inflation. You know, we're hearing a lot about, um, um, you, you know, with, with the, especially with like the tech side, um, you know, if you look right now, like the ARC fund, for example, which is probably the best indicator of, of tech disruptor stocks, it actually ended up in bear territory. It's down close to 28% for the year so far. And it's not alone. Now, Apple, Tesla, 9% and 10% respectively, so I think you know the places that are going to get the biggest hit are going to get hit the hardest are the things that did the best last year. So like tech stocks, typically growth stocks don't respond well in a rising rate environment. But on the other hand, you know things that would benefit from the opening of our economy and also do well in an inflationary environment, things like value stocks, energy, um, small caps, things of that nature are going to are going to do well. And, and that's even seen right now. You talked about where crude oil is; it's up 25 percent for the year. Um, you know, a year ago this time, it was almost at a negative. Well, let me ask you this. Would you do some sort of barbell approach where some of these growth names like Tesla and Apple, uh, you mentioned the ARK fund, um, are to the downside, right? So Tesla's not at 900, it's at 700 or 600. Um, is that buying opportunity at the same time while you put some money into something that seems safer at this time, like value or energy or Small caps, which are very volatile of late. Uh, it certainly is. It is certainly is a buying opportunity. Although I, I would caution, I wouldn't overweight anything there because there's a lot better deals to be had in other places. Um, you know, if your example, like if you look right now at at value stocks, like uh, for example, um, like Caterpillar, for example, you know, is trading at 13 times its forward earnings. Um, you know, those areas of the market, things that are trading at low multiples uh, that are still relatively cheap, but again, would benefit to the opening of the economy and forecasted to have great earnings. So a name like Caterpillar, I mean, that's a good name, a long a name we've known for many years, right? A lot of people look to dividend payers and some of the old school types of names rather than all the disruptors that we've been seeing. Um, any other names in any other areas such as energy or commodities or drugs or anything else that you think might have a chance at doing well? Yeah, I mean, the restaurant sector, um, you know, it, I, I think if you're going to invest in these things, it's always better to do it on a broad based index. But, you know, a company like Bloomin, for example, um, you know, they're going to benefit from the opening of the economy. They're going to help with adding jobs to the economy. And, you know, their earnings forecasts are looking really good right now.